Hey guys, I'm Rob and welcome back to Rob's Model Cars. Now before we get into today's model review, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please do. Uh, don't forget to click that bell notification so you don't miss any of the latest videos. And if you can, I'd appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm to help this channel grow quicker. I do give away a high-end model every 5,000 subscribers, so the quicker the channel grows, the more free models I can give away to you guys. So please consider doing those three things, uh, and let's get into today's video. So I was actually requested by one of you guys to do a review on a model that I've had in my display case for quite some time. Uh, I bought this model probably around 10 years ago, so I think it was newish back then, so I'd say maybe it's 10 or 11 years old. And what I'm talking about is the Kyosho, or Kyosho, however you want to pronounce that, Ferrari 575 GTC Evolucione. Now I've got the yellow presentation color, but it did come in yellow. I think it came in black as well, and it also had some race livery versions as well. Now considering this model is around 10, 11 years old, uh, the detail is actually pretty good in the model. There are some points now that you look at and think, well, they could have done that better. But remember, this is around uh, 10 or 11 years old, this model. So. Uh, it does come packaged in a styrofoam shell inside. The model isn't inside at the moment. I've just taken it straight out of the display case. Um, but they really did do lovely picture boxes back then by Kyosho. Uh, pictures all the way around the box and just the standard writing on the back of the box. Um, but one thing I found very interesting when I got this box out before is it actually has a little uh, Hot Wheels logo on the box, uh, which basically says, associated trademarks are owned and used under Mattel, um, yet it's a model made by Kyosho. So uh, that one is a little bit of a head scratcher for me. Um, but today we're gonna have a look at this model in detail. So as I said, it came straight out of the display case. So this is the model we're gonna look at today. This is the Kyosho Ferrari 575 GTC Evolutione. Uh, and I quite like it in the yellow color. So we're gonna put this on the turntable and have a look at this older model uh, as requested by you guys. So uh, let's go. Okay, so let's check out this 10 or 11 year old Kyosho model and see what it's like. Now, as I said, it does have quite a lot of good detail in this model considering it was made over a decade ago. Uh, so let's start having a look at the model. Now, this is a fully opening die cast model. It is die cast. Uh, and I just want to point out that some of the older Kyosho models do suffer from paint rash. Uh, this one seems okay at this stage. It doesn't really have any blistering or real roughness. I can see a little bit of uh, under this bright light, a couple of little dots through the front of the hood, but it still feels smooth. So uh, hopefully this model is not going to suffer from paint rash like a lot of Kyosho models are known for. So yeah, let's start with the paintwork. The paintwork is pretty good, as I mentioned. Uh, it's pretty glossy throughout. Uh, no real signs of rash on the model yet. Um, but yeah, only time will tell with these older die cast models. Now, it does have real photo etch mesh as well. So the front air scoop here is all mesh. Uh, it does have this tow hook on here, which is just plastic and flexible. Uh, you do have this big front splitter on here, which is in matte black, and you've got these big flat side canards as well, which are also just in a matte black finish. Um, and yeah, that's about it. You've, you do have your little driving lights in the front here, and there's some mesh in the side ducts as well. Now the headlight detail is pretty reasonable. Uh, the model does need a little bit of a polish, I think, at this stage, but uh, the headlight detail is okay for this age of the model. Uh, as I said, the lenses need a little bit of a polish up, but they're not too bad. Uh, and this hood has lots and lots of big vents in it, as well as all these little uh, pins down the sides and the front corners of the hood as well. Now this comes off, but I'm not gonna show you the inside of that yet. Now obviously this is the racing version so you can see how wide these front fenders are flared out compared to the standard road car. That goes with the same with the rear fenders. It is a wide body racing car. Now these big vents on the side. Now these should be open on the real car but these are just a, 
a, like a textured plastic to look like an open vent. It doesn't detract too much from the model, uh, but I can understand why they did that. They would have had to do a lot more detail work on the model if these were completely open. And at the end of the day, that's the opening for the door mechanisms behind there. So you don't really want all of that visible. Now the windscreen is pretty clear plastic. It's a thicker plastic, so it's not thin like resin models. So you are actually going to have good longevity with that front window. It does just have a big plastic windscreen wiper, which is a little bit bulky, but remember over 10 years old, this model. It does have the uh, glass clamps though that hold the window in, which is a nice little touch. Uh, and it is running the yellow Ferrari windscreen banner as well with the two horses on there. Now the side mirrors are quite cool. They're a slimline racing version of the street mirror. Uh, as I said, the side windows uh, lead, uh, the side windows have a race window in there as well. That's both sides on the left hand side as well. Uh, and you do get the pump for the rear wide fenders coming out of the doors, which is pretty cool. Uh, you do have your little door handle detail, uh, and you do have your big black side skirt here with the extension that runs into the wide flare as well. Uh, and you do have your exhaust outlet tucked into the side skirt. Now there is one either side. Obviously this is a v V12 race car, so you've got an exhaust pipe either side coming out of the side skirt. As I mentioned, it is a wide body, so it does go into these huge, big, wide rear fenders. Uh, there are air scoops up the top here in the top of the quarters, uh, and then you've got these rear exit, exiting vents here as well. Now, the model does come with a huge rear wing on it. Now, that's all just matte black uh, inside the legs is all matte black, the outside, the end plates, it's all just matte black. So no carbon fiber decals on this model as old as it is. Now if we continue round to the back of the model, they have done a really good job on the tail lights of this model. Uh, there is a hole in the boot lid to access the air jack port. Uh, you do have a third brake light here and you've got the little silver Cavallino uh, in the center. Uh, you do have another yellow tow hook on the back here as well, which is just plastic. Uh, and you've got this huge, big under rear diffuser as well. So that's just all in matte black plastic as well. Uh, and you've just got some grills in here as well. Now they're just sealed plastic parts. So uh, nothing open on the back of the car. So that pretty much wraps up all the details around the exterior of the model. Uh, I, oh, I forgot to mention the race fuel fillers. There's one of these either side in the back windows. Um, but overall, pretty cool looking model on display. Now it is a fully opening model, as I said. So if we remove the front hood, as you can see here, you can see the light through all of these louvers are open, the back ones, the big front ones, uh, and you do have photo etched mesh in that front opening as well. Uh, and the underside is all just painted in matte black too. So that is all the details of that vented hood, which is really cool. Now, if we get onto the contentious subject about molded plastic that looks like carbon fiber, that's what they were doing 11 years ago. So all the engine detail in here, which there's not, to be fair, not that much engine detail on this model uh, because it is covered by the uh, huge air boxes and all the airflow restrictors from that racing series. So pretty much everything you see in here is textured plastic to look like carbon fiber. Uh, it, it's not too bad, um, but remember, this model is 10 or 11 years old, so it was more acceptable back then, less acceptable now in new models. You do obviously have your brake and clutch reservoirs there. Uh, you do have another little uh, canister here with an air hose on there, and of course you can see your big uh, radiator mounted on an angle here in this front section of the engine compartment. But that's pretty much all there is. There's a couple of little braces and things like that, but uh, it's pretty basic on the interior of this engine compartment. But nonetheless, it still looks good with the model displayed open. Now let's have a look. The rear trunk lid comes out as well. Now this has got a couple of large slots in it which slot around the wing legs, as you can see here. So these are where the wing legs slide into. And again, that's all just painted matte black on the inside. 
Now it's actually quite cool what's in the boot system because you do have your your fuel system and your surge tank uh, and it does have a molded plastic carbon fiber floor in the boot lid and then you've got your little canisters and hoses uh, in here on top of that so actually looks pretty good it's a nice little detail for a 10 plus year old model so that's what you get in the trunk compartment uh, and this part that sticks out here is your air jack uh, and that's where the hole in the boot lid covers this black thing sticking out so as Cool as the detail is in the engine compartment uh, and the boot compartment, I would say the, the greatest detail of this model would be the interior. So if we open the doors up, uh, actually really quite a strong door mechanism. I don't see these dropping or failing at any time. They do actually stay closed by themselves, which is great. So let's have a look at the interior of this model. So if we have a look at the door trims first, um, just a big cutout because it is a racing car. Again, we've got the molded plastic to look like carbon fiber on here. But remember guys, this is over 10 years old, this model. Now, if we have a look at the interior, uh, you can see here, steering wheel does turn with the wheels uh, and there's quite a extensive amount of detail on the interior of this model. So you've got your racing steering wheel, You've got your big sequential shifter in the center console, uh, full roll cage, uh, and you've got the single seat with the Sabelt racing harnesses, which are in cloth. You can also see the spring uh, attached to the steering wheel, uh, which goes to the underside of the dash, which is really cool. Uh, and if you have a look at the passenger side, this is where it's all happening in here. So you've got all your uh, ECUs, uh, fire extinguisher bottle, uh, cabling, engine management, it's all in there in um, glorious detail. So uh, these are the fantastic details you used to get uh, with Kyosho models. So hopefully you can see all that detail inside. Um, but I, as I said, I think the, the best detail in this model car is actually in the interior. So yeah, really, really cool. It looks great on display. Uh, obviously you can see all the way through all the windows and see the silver uh, race interior and see all the details. So um, really quite an impressive model for its age. I think back 10 years ago, I maybe paid about $145 for this model Australian. So uh, really, really, it's one of my treasured models that I probably won't sell in a very long time. Uh, and hopefully I don't need to repaint it because it develops a lot of paint rash. Um, wheel detail is okay on this model. You do have your multi-spoke OZ rims front and rear. Uh, as I mentioned, the wheels do steer, not march. There's not much movement in there, uh, but they do roll as well. So look, overall, this model, as I said, I think it's quite good for its age. It's over 10 years old, um, but it does have a lot of good things going for it. And especially that interior is really quite special. Uh, a lot of details uh, that you used to get with these Kyosho models. So uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a great model for its age. Um, you can still find these on eBay. I don't think they're demanding really high prices. Uh, I don't think it's considered one of the most desirable models to have. But if you're a Ferrari collector, well, you've got to have one in the collection. It's definitely worthwhile grabbing one. Uh, and yeah, hopefully, as I said, they don't really develop too much paint rash over the coming years. Uh, but I really like this model, so uh, I was happy to get it out of the display case and show you. Uh, now, if I'm going to give this one a Rob score, because it's a plus 10-year-old model, but if I'm going to give it a Rob score for value of what I paid for it, it was really quite a cheap model back in the day, so uh, I would probably give this one uh, an eight and a half out of 10 as well. So still a good buy even to this day, uh, these older Kyosho models. I wouldn't pay, I probably wouldn't pay over $500 for it. Uh, that's US or Australian, but uh, as I said, I don't think these are really demanding really high prices. So uh, if you like it, go and grab yourself one. Uh, you won't really be too disappointed with it. It's a pretty cool model. 
Uh, but that's going to wrap up today's review. So as I mentioned at the start, uh, if you're not subscribed already, please do. Don't forget to smash that like button if you like the video. It really does help the channel grow. And stay tuned. Plenty more model reviews this year, more custom models to reveal. But that's going to wrap it up. So until next time, thanks for watching Rob's Model Cars.